Welcome everyone to 7.1 Integration by Parts. Now, integration by parts is one of these extremely important topics, along with U substitution, it's one of the most powerful integration techniques out there. So, in this section, well, I should probably tell you what is integration by parts. So, we'll learn this method and then we'll apply it to a variety of problems. So, let's get to it with the theorem. All right, so integration by parts is the closest thing we have to a product rule for antiderivatives. And so you can see we have this f times g prime of x dx. And the claim is that this is equal to f of x times g of x minus the integral of g of x times f prime of x dx. Now sometimes we write, like to write this in a little bit cleaner of a way. So if we say u is f of x and v is g of x, then we can use the substitution rule, and the formula becomes the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And so I wanted to spend a little bit of time here to go over the idea of the proof for this. And the idea is going to come down to the product rule for the derivative. So I'm going to write uv, and I want to take the derivative of this. And that would be the same thing as, well, I'll just write it again. Now on the left-hand side, I'm going to leave this alone. So I'm just going to say uv, the derivative of this, is equal to, and then I'm going to expand it out using the product rule that we know for derivatives. So this is u prime v plus uv prime. And now let's go ahead and integrate both sides. So if I integrate the left-hand side, again, with respect to x, integrate the right hand side with respect to x. Well, on the left hand side, these integrals and derivatives are just going to cancel each other out. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then on the right hand side, I want to distribute this integral. And then the final thing is that I'm going to use my definition of differentials. So instead of writing u prime dx and v prime dx, uh, which I'll highlight here, right, and v prime dx, I'm going to write this as du. So v prime dx is dv. So writing it like this, I have the integral of v du plus the integral of u dv is equal to uv. So now if I just subtract my integral of v du from both sides, well then I get the formula up above. So this is the idea of the proof. So remember, integration by parts just comes from the product rule of derivatives. All right, and there it is. So I have one more remark for you on this page, and it's just to say that we can use uh, integration by parts not only on indefinite integrals, but actually on definite integrals as well. So now we have limits, right, a and b. So in this case, it's going to be f of x times g of x evaluated uh, from a to b minus the integral from a to b of g of x times f prime of x dx. So it's essentially the same formula as we have up above, but now we just have limits. All right, so let's get some practice here. I have a nice example, integrating x times cosine of x dx. And so I need to decide which is my u, which is my v, how can I apply this integration by parts, right? So I need it to look like the integral of u dv. So I'm going to go ahead and assign, in this case, my u to be x. I'm going to just try this out. And my dv has to be the rest, so cosine of x dx. So now I need to calculate out uh, a few things, right? I need u, v, I need then minus v du. So I have u and dv, so I need du. Uh, that's just going to end v. So du is just going to be, well, the derivative of x is dx. And then if I integrate dv, I get v. So if I integrate cosine of x dx, I'm going to get sine of x. All right, so let's plug this in. So my u is x and my v is sine of x. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So x times sine of x minus, now I need v du. So v in my case is sine of x, and then du is the same thing as dx. All right, now I can take the integral of this. Right? So if I integrate negative sine, 
Uh, looks like I'm going to get, well, it would be negative, negative, so it would actually be positive cosine of x. And then I don't forget my plus c, my constant of integration. And let's check really quick. You know, this was a relatively fast one. And in fact, we can always check, but let's actually take the time right now. So remember, when I take the derivative of this thing, my answer, I should get back to where I started with. So I should get out x times cosine of x. So using the product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And then plus, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So these things cancel out, and I'm left with x times cosine of x. So indeed, this works out. I get back what I started. All right, let's try one that's a little bit more difficult here. The integral of x squared times e to the 3x dx. Again, I need to figure out what should my u be and what should my dv be. And a good rule to remember is that if you have a power of x, that's going to be your u, or that's a good choice for your u. So a power of x, that's my x squared, that's a good choice. And then the rest of the stuff has to be my dv, so e to the 3x dx. Okay, so I need to calculate on a few things. Just as before, I need my du and I need my v. So du is going to be 2x dx. And v, well, when I integrate dv, uh, let's see, I'm going to have e to the 3x. Uh, but then I'm also going to have a 1 third, right? Because if I took the derivative of this, I'd have to get back to where I started. Okay, so therefore, uh, this integral that I have up above, uh, that's the integral of x squared e to the 3x dx, is going to be equal to uh, uv, so x squared times 1 third e to the 3x, minus v du. So, oh sorry, minus the integral of v du. So 1 third e to the 3x, and then du is going to be 2x dx. And so I can do a little bit of simplification here. Bring out my constants, my 2 and my 1 third. And we can see that ah, I still can't integrate this so quickly, but I could do another integration by parts here. So now I'm not completely done. Uh, I went from x squared to x, essentially. So I'm going to need to do a little bit more work here to be able to evaluate out uh, this last integral. But I have actually gotten somewhere. So again, u being the power of x is a good choice usually. So dv is going to be my e to the 3x dx. du is dx, and v is 1 third e to the 3x. So then minus 2 thirds. And now this integral, according to integration by parts, is supposed to be my uv. So in this case, it's going to be x times 1 third e to the 3x. So I can just write this x over 3 times e to the 3x minus the integral of v du. So v is 1 third e to the 3x, and du is just dx now. And this is an integral that I can actually calculate out. So let's see, I get x squared over 3e to the 3x minus, and let's see if I can distribute this a little bit. So 2x over 9e to the 3x minus a negative will be plus 2 thirds. Uh, and actually, there's another 1 third in there. Uh, and when I integrate that, uh, I'm going to get an, an, an additional 1 third uh, e to the 3x. And so let's go ahead and move this over just a little bit. And let's factor out. Let's simplify this a little bit. We can see all of my terms actually have a 1 third. Uh, and all of my terms have this e to the 3x. So if we factor out an e to the 3x and a 1 third, uh, looks like my first term has an x squared left. Uh, my second term would have, what, 2 thirds and an x. And then my third term would have, let's see, 2 ninths. And there we are. That is my final answer. Ooh, actually, I forgot, plus my constant of integration. All right, I think that's a pretty good place to stop and take a break. Let's go ahead and stretch our legs, and when we come back, we'll finish up this section with a few more examples. I'll see you then.